Hey, how are you? It's super good, super good. It's a, it's a huge pleasure for me to have you here uh, after been listening to your music for such a long time. Defton's here live for the first time on Virgin Radio. Thank you for your time. All right, thanks for having us. First of all, uh, congratulations. The last album, I just love it. Uh, who came up with the idea for the title and the idea for the album cover? Stefan? You are aware. Yeah, Stefan. We'll just say Stefan. Okay. Uh, no. Uh, we all sort of just pass things around and say, hey, what do you think about this? You like this? Um, same way the music's created, we kind of just all sort of throw ideas into, you know, the circle and then things just sort of, you know, Start to build yeah, themselves. Something and, seems cool, and then we kind of just go with it, you know? So. Yeah. I mean, the title and, and, and the art itself, I mean, I think a general consensus of that was that, you know, the dichotomy of the, the, the name and, the, and everything, you know, uh, the having the connotation that it has and the image sort of having a completely opposite um, vibe, I think, to me was just, I think that's something we've always kind of put in our music. Our music has always had sort of a abrasiveness to it, but it's also can be very soothing at, at times and, and beautiful in, in certain aspects. So, um, um, I don't know. I just, I mean, not even that it represented this record so much, but just us as a band, I think it's like, oh, okay, that, that's very depth on, you know, looking at it and, and hearing it. Yeah. When I, when I, when I discovered that the title was about to be gore, I said, probably it's going to be like the heaviest, uh, record you ever done in your life, but you came up uh, in previous interviews saying that this is probably the best record so far for Deftones. Are, do, I do was you... lying. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm uh, I don't. With every record we make, I mean, you know, uh, our intentions are to make a better record than the last record we make. Um, whether that happens or not, you know, that's not for us to decide. But whether we enjoy making it, that's you know, that's that's what we try to do. We 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 try to. Not go in with a preconceived idea of what we're trying to create, but let it happen, let it happen organically, naturally with us. What happens when we all get in the room together? <clears throat> so, you know, that's what happens. And sometimes we're all in different places, like not just physically. I mean, we all live in different cities and stuff, but mentally it's like we go in to make a record and it's like, you know, I don't know, you know, these guys are like my best buddies, but at the same time, it's like we don't see each other every day. So like, you know, we're all sort of in different, we can be in different headspaces and when that happens we all get in the room there that's why kind of the record comes out the way it is so it's never one uniform look to it you know it's never going to be just like deftones the heaviest record ever deftones the ambient record deftones it's it's all that stuff that we all go through on a daily basis kind of put into a, a pot and just stir it up and you know it's, it's kind of a snapshot of that time in our lives you know and this record gore was recorded kind of over a long period of time we did it like almost over a year period but only working like for a week at a time work for a week go home for a month or two come back work for 10 days maybe go on the road for a you know week go play or two. some shows kind of break it up it was nice you know a different yeah. approach for us too yeah but it wasn't so much like oh we got to go make a record now everybody just dive into the record yeah. yeah it was like and go it was like live life make a record while we're living our lives and um uh in doing so i think it's a very honest record for that for that you know that matter um because it's not anything that we you know made a big plan about but just like enjoy spending time with each other and when we hung out together that's what happened and it's documented there on the record so so between those breaks you had you had the chance maybe to test some of the new songs live as well so maybe we never do though we never do okay no i mean we have a hard time playing our songs that we've been playing <laughs> that we wrote, you know, years and years and years ago that, you know, that to rehearse. So like when we go out and do shows, it's more for us to just sort of like reconvene and, you know, just play, play music together without thinking too much about it. You know, when you're writing, you, you're, you're trying to not think about it, but it's, you know, you're, you're, once you're in it, you're in that mode. So to play shows sometimes was, was, was beneficial. I think for us just to sort of like, you know, let, the steam out a little bit and just like play and just like more of a primal kind of you know thing and then go back in this in the studio and then get a little bit more focused and then uh so we've always separated those two things it's i feel like we've thought about like you know trying to blend those worlds a little bit more but i think it makes sense for us to 
you know, to, to... It was just like, it was the whole process was, was in a, you know, because before it was always been about, here's your allotted two, three months, whatever, go be creative, even if you're not feeling creative, you know, go make a, you know, write a record. And this was a new uh, approach just for the fact that we were able to try to, the main thing, I think the goal was to try to be normal too, to try to still have lives, which we have at home, and be normal people, um, but just breaking it up with a, you know, a couple weeks of this, and you know, but also still earning a living as well, you know, but just breaking up the process, and it did take longer, but uh, it was just a, a different experiment for us after many years of doing it pretty much the same way, you know. Which are the driving forces that leads this record? I mean, probably the, the driving forces that that leads you to to this record, when, when, when you got together and you said, okay, we're ready to record some, some stuff, also driving, lyrically speaking. I think for, I mean, really, and it sounds sort of silly, but the driving force for us mainly is is hanging, hanging out, and, and if, if, even on the road, if, I mean, it can get grueling, of course, everything, you know, it's five people living lives, but 75% of, 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 of the fight, or the, or the, the pro, is if, if we're happy, man, and if, you know, if we're laughing, then the rest can come easy, it's, you know, and after doing it for many, many years, it's, it's very important to have that, but we get, we just talk shit, I mean, we're, we sit around, we laugh, we joke, we're mean, we're, you know, but we, we're brothers, man, you know, we talk shit, and, and that's so much a part of the process of, of having that already, if that's going well, the other things tend to come, you know, so, um, but that's the drive, we, 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 we chill, yeah. we chill well, pretty good. What's crazy is that we all live, you know, there, there was a time when we all kind of lived in the same neighborhood, that's how the band started 30, almost 30 years ago, we were talking about earlier, um, what? what? Yes, yes, in the, in uh, Stefan's garage, who lived, uh, you know, maybe six, seven blocks away from me. Um, uh, Abe didn't live far. But the buses, so my, the bus 67 and 68 went right from where I lived at, right to Stefan's, like these two city buses. Yeah. So kind of just, you know. But we all lived in the same neighborhood. So we, making music together as kids was a lot different because we, you know, it, it's the same because we, we still make efforts to go and hang out, but it was like, it was a lot easier, I guess. Then. Now we all live in different cities. I mean, um, he lives in Sacramento. Uh, Frank and Abe live in Sacramento. I live in Oregon. Stefan lives in uh, Los Angeles. Sergio lives in, in New York. So we're all spread across the U.S. pretty much. And for us to get together, it's like, it's an event. We're excited about getting together, but then it's like, you know, it's, it's not as, uh, as a natural process as it was when we were kids, just like, you know, I'm gonna go over to Abe's house. Yeah. There's, there's We're still gonna... things to get done too, but it, it's like, we used to always be hang, you know, but so we get back and we hang and then we get, we, we, there's also a mindset that we know we need to accomplish something too. So there's a better use of time these days too, yeah. but it's still a hang and that's the organic part of it. So, yeah. so there. And now, uh, Lyrically speaking, um, the, um, the first song out of Gore, uh, Prayers Triangles, has this sentence saying, uh, a, a new demon inside of me. So that, that feeling of anxiety is still probably one of the uh, main subject for, for your lyrics, or it's just uh, a figurative thing that you like to point out? Well, the out. lyric is a new strange yeah you know um demon inside so it's maybe something you know n not the same as what it used to be whatever um and it's not to be taken that literal itself e either it's just um sort of a, a metaphor for a lot of things but that song really in itself prayers and triangles it's it's a dichotomy you know uh, a juxtaposition of itself i mean the whole the whole the whole song um even the way it sounds, I mean, it's, you know, it's got really these, these super, you know, sort of, um, silky verses and then like a, a more, uh, almost, um, how can I describe it? Like dissident, like irrit irritating, like urgent, all the like same ur time. urgent, urgency to it. And, and it's, um, uh, you know, I don't know. And that's kind of what the song talks about. It's sort of like the yin and yang of, 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 uh, you know, what, what a lot of people probably deal with internally. You know what I mean? Some days I'm very, um, very hopeful and loving and, and, uh, just like, mo you know, most people and some days, just like most people, I'm a fucking asshole. You know what I mean? Um, I try not to be, but I have things that, uh, you know, there's that, that dichotomy that exists, I think, in most people. And, um, and musically, I'd lie to myself if I just try to go out there and be the most heaviest singer in the world. I'm not. I'm 43 years old and my life is pretty good. So like for me to think that I have to come out there and just be mad all the time, I'm not. You know what I mean? 
the same thing is like I'm not the most uh, I'm not the most pleasant person all the time either. I live uh, pretty much like everybody else. So that song is just a um, I don't know. It's, it's goes back to kind of what we we're saying about Deftones always having this this thing of you know beauty and urgency and and all this stuff sort of mixed in together. And um, that song was was something that sonically it sounded like that in the beginning so i just kind of wrote the words in, the, in line with with the way that the song made me feel i just reacted to it he's uh you anticipated me i was uh was about to tell you that i saw you live um last time you came here here and uh i had that kind of positive vibration seeing you live so uh to me also as a fan it's uh it's that dichotomy it's it's pretty it's pretty uh, real i mean uh, so, some lyrics are are very you know in that kind of way but then there's a uh, so much positivity good vibration people just enjoying the show you enjoying the show with the people that's something that it's uh very you know um uh, flattering for us as as fan So this uh, this kind of dichotomy it's 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 very cool in my opinion mm -hmm. for a band like Deftones who's been together for uh, so many years going on talking about Gore album uh, there's another song called uh, Doom User uh, we're live on Facebook so which is your relation with social media lifestyle and uh, you know especially new generation they're probably are approaching to Deftones, even on Virgin Radio, this time for the first time. Hmm. Do you consider them a uh, part of that generation, just doom users? That's funny you say that. Um, that title I've had for years and years and years, and it, and it, and it is, um, it, it's sort of, it came to light because of technology. That was, that was what, what the name it for, but it also fit to a lot of other things that were going on in life, like, um, drug addictions, all kinds of stuff. Like it, to me, it fit to a lot of, a lot of different things that, that I've experienced in my time on this planet and in the last 15 years or so, 10 years, whatever. Um, but that, the, um, I've always, I've always loved, loved that, 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 that title. Now to social media, I, I, um, I'm not like anti-social media at all. I actually, I actually, um, I use social media to an, to an extent. Um, I don't use it. I don't think I use it how, you know, the, the, probably the way that, that, that most people do. I mean, I, I um, I, I use it to share a lot of time. I don't really communicate back and forth. Um, I, I feel like sometimes, uh, with social media, it's a little bit too, um, accessible like people are too accessible so people like i don't want to make myself that accessible i enjoy sharing things with people most of the times like i have a uh, like twitter for instance and i have i don't even know how many followers i have i don't have that many but 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 the people that do follow me on there most of them know that i'm not going to be on there like talking to people and answering questions or i just drink water yes or or, or like even like uh, the, mostly what i use it for is to like share some music that i like a video that i like um uh, some national geographic thing that's ex interesting to me or something that's you know sharing things not some I'll always have to be things about myself but just sharing things in general and and Even I don't, I don't even do that so often, but, but that's usually what I utilize it for. Facebook, I do have Facebook, um, but it's only my small niche of family and, and my brothers and sisters and my cousins and my friends, you know, clo close friends. Um, but it's not public, you know what I mean? And so I'm not like, I don't use it for, te for advertising, I guess, uh, you know, for Deftones or any of my projects or anything. Um, maybe, I mean, maybe that's not smart. Maybe, <laughs> maybe I should, but I, I don't, I don't feel that way. I feel like, Like, I kind of have it, I, I use it the way I like to use it. You understand what I'm saying? So it's not like, um, um, but though some people, it does benefit them a lot. You know what I mean? Especially like young bands and things like that. You know, um, do I wish that there was Facebook when we were coming up? No, probably not. You know, I, and, and, um, just social media in general, YouTube, all that stuff. I mean, we were lucky enough as a band, we were able to sort of become a band and, learn in front of people but not in front of the world you know we played in the garage for years like uh you know maybe two years before we actually started going out and playing shows we were little kids in the garage learning how to play instruments i was learning how to be how to sing i didn't know how to sing i never took singing lessons i never whatever so you know 
I didn't know what I was doing, but I was able to figure it out myself before trying to become a star and put myself in front of people to the world. You know what I mean? So, so there's good things about it. The fact that you can access that many people, but the drawback I think is sometimes like you kind of, you lose the, the, the opportunity to come fall into things naturally yourself. And before it's so easy just to like, show other people before you even know what you're doing. You know what I mean? So we're lucky for that, well, I think. And Mystique, I mean, it's, it's all about Mystique. You know, we come from, also, the, the era we come from was, there was curiosity about, even, you know, bands especially, or any person in the limelight or whatever, you know. But, but especially really, bands, magazines though. was so much fun. We'd go to, yeah, you would, like, we would go to Tower Records or any magazine shop and look at the rock magazines, and you would, like, you would learn so much just from a picture. Even if it was a part of a picture, yeah. you had to look into it and, like, Oh, yeah. even same with out. the sticker, the yeah. same the with the same with the same totally, with records, man. And you know? learn things from from seeing yeah. that, like you said, you know, and cassettes, sharing cassettes, and, but also another. patience. Mystique is such a, a magical thing, and just it's also bullshit. too. mystique is bullshit, but it's also kind of magical, you know. I mean, but also just having some patience too. Everything is immediate, and it's the way it is now. That's, that's one thing that, yeah. that that has changed like a lot, and I realized it's like instant. You know, patience. Yeah. We had patience. We had to, you know, we waited. Yeah, it's just different now, and that's nothing, nothing wrong with it being different now. It's just the way it is now. But yeah. so, so it's not like I have nothing negative to say about it, or, or I'm not going to hype it up either. It is what it is, and it's it's yeah. going to be here whether whatever I say about it exists. So, so do I use it? Yes, but I, I feel like I use it in in, a, in a, my own way, and I enjoy it in my own way. You know, what I mean? which which is in the the most, you know, I guess the the I'm a social media prude. Yeah, Abe has no social media. Well, I'm, he lurks I'm on a, Instagram though. Don't trip. He's on uh, there. He oh, sees all. Yes. Ah, okay. All seeing eye. Yes, but he has no accounts that we okay. know. Okay, so be careful. He, he was what? watching you. <laughs> I do remember when I when I was a uh, was a young kid. Uh, that uh, that sticker on 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 a skateboard about that R in the middle of the star that was the Revelation record. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, thing and so it's iconic many, though too the image yeah. is iconic so, that, so that's what iconic. made you sort of discover yeah. some of those hardcore yeah. bands and stuff. So, some of those like yeah. uh, Quicksand, Shelter and, oh, and all those bands coming yep. out of that yeah that was kind of mystique that yeah. you know on, on some other you know nowadays you kind of miss it you know, yeah. for, for, for this, this new generation. And I bought a lot of, of records that were kind of crappy because yeah, totally. um, even with the label you're like well yeah. Revelation you, know, you always like you kind of we all did you know I know. Yeah, but I, know. I still find it's cool because I, I go to some, you know, I wouldn't say it's the dark web. It's like the grayish web I go to. Okay. And I find like really great underground music, like awesome music. So like I still utilize it and I, you know, I find things that I wouldn't find. Like I live in a small town, like in, in northern, uh, the Pacific Northwest. And we have one record shop, you know what I mean? And it's like used, a lot of used records, you know, and which is great. I can find, you know, older stuff, but new stuff, I'm not going to find any new music unless I'm, I log into my computer in the morning. And I, honestly, sometimes that's the first thing I do when I get up. I get up, I get my coffee, and I log on I, and I, onto the gray web. And I, but the hunt, I, the hunt is still really, well, I'm hunting quest. still yeah. for music, you know what I mean? And I'm and finding things that way. I wouldn't have found had it, had it, you know, had not existed. So, uh, you know, I can't, I can't hate on it. Yeah. I got some question from uh, some of your friends coming up all over the world. The first one, it's pretty easy. Uh, what's your opinion uh, about a band called Nirvana? Well, Nirvana, Nirvana were great. Pretty badass, yeah. Yeah, pretty badass. No, I mean, we do we experience that. I, I, I was uh, I was in high school. We were both in high school when, when, the, yeah. when Bleach came out. Um, I remember listening to it then and thinking that it was good, but like I wasn't really that blown away by it. Nevermind came out right when I was out yeah, of 91. high school. 91. Yeah. That's the year we graduated. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, definitely was taken back by it. I mean, like, you know, sound quality, just vibe wise, it was, it was, it was still is one of the greatest records. And also, though, but even just geographically, where we were from, Sacramento is by San Francisco and well, whatever from Portland and then Seattle. I mean, so the, Nirvana was playing all the, you know, all the time. I've been just small tours back in the day before they ever got anything, you know. So they were very familiar. I remember, you know, the shirts were. You know, it was just part of our thing, kind of, because it was just in proximity. It was close, you know what I mean? And then it went, it was about a it mega, was a mega great, as it could. There was a yeah. lot of great timeless music, though, that came out in that, in that era. There was oh, a lot man. of shit, too. Don't, don't get me wrong. But there was a lot of, like, timeless, great music yeah. at that time. Like, the Smashing Pumpkins' first record came out then, yeah. which was, like, 
that still is a brilliant record. I love that first record. But also uh, the fact that all these major labels were, were, were putting all this money into these bands that would never have ever been able to make a record. And especially with some, I mean, all these, these bands were getting swooped up, all these majors, because it was, it was happening at the time. And there was no way in hell that any of these bands, you know, like they could make, you know, Mudhoney got signed to whatever, but, but all these, so many bands would had major label money for a second and were able to make records that were badass records, you know, I mean, Money yeah. Express record oh, that's you know great. i mean just think, just yeah. for instance yeah and that was just a phase in time in, in time and and because those bands would never get they, they could make any records yeah. but they could you know they actually had some exposure on a different level it lasted for a good five six eight year whatever you know ten years um True trippy that. time trippy time cool time kind of miss it yeah uh i got another question uh what, one guy is asking, how was it working with Norma Jean? Because uh, you name like different projects. Yeah, you know what's crazy is that like I, so that that's popped up the other day. That song, I forgot that I did it. I don't remember. I do remember actually a little bit. I we recorded at, 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 with Ross Robinson at, at his house in in um Venice, right? in, in, I was gonna say Malibu, Venice, yeah. yeah. Um, and I remember <laughs> sort of being in this room. It was like a little stone like room, and we. I remember writing, sort of writing the music to it, whatever, but I don't really remember. I don't even remember the song. The other day it popped up and I was like, I was going to listen to it because I forgot what it sounded like, whatever. Um, but uh, I remember they were very nice guys and whatever. And, you know, Ross, at, who is an old friend of ours, obviously he, he called me and asked me if I'd come and, and do it with him. And it was, I think we wrote like actually like two or three songs. Um, and like I said, I don't remember any three of them, but I know one of them ended up on their record. Yeah. Yeah, it's one of one of one of that uh, occasion when when internet helps you. Uh, I I totally lost the fact that you had a collaboration with Whitechapel. Uh, I forgot about that one too. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I I mean I just discovered yeah. just like less than one year ago. So yeah. that that it's uh, uh, just just part of something yeah. that come comes out of uh, of it's the web. It's fun though. I like to, like when when people ask me to do stuff, you know, whatever. If they like. The fact that, that they're excited to, they want to hear my voice on it, whatever. I mean, a lot, a lot of times they don't have time to do it, but if, but if I do, and then like, like with that Whitechapel one was easy because they, they wrote the lyrics, like every, he sent to me, here's a song, here's how the words go, blah, blah. And it took me like five minutes to record it. You know, it was just like, okay, here's the words, sing it. Like, and I went, I was actually already in the studio with crosses recording that was, I was in the middle of recording that record. So it was like, I pulled it up on the thing and just sang it really quick, screamed it. Actually didn't have to, didn't even have to sing, just had to scream. And, um, and that was it. And then I didn't, and I hadn't even never met the, them either. Hmm. Um, so it was just like, I bet we had a mutual friend, somebody who I know very well, um, who's, uh, from Sacramento, uh, this guy Sean Carano, and he's been a, a great friend to all our band and, and everybody in Sacramento for a lot, for a long time. So it was more of like a favor for him and they ended up being nice, nice guys, whatever, but yeah. But it's like, if I really, if you played me the song right now, I wouldn't, I okay. wouldn't remember. <laughs> um, all those collaboration, did it help the creation of new music for Deftones uh, also? Like, uh, not, not thinking about the collaboration, but, but the, the side project that you had through the years. Uh, not really. I mean, I, I, I actually, I enjoy just creating stuff, you know, anytime. So maybe just creating outside of Deftones to me has always just been fun. I mean, you know, it's just different. It's just different people. So it's doing different things and it's usually other people's ideas. Um, I've never done a side project that's been like my ideas. Any of my, any of my ideas are always Deftones songs. So, um, usually it's someone else has an idea and then it's me just reacting to their idea. So it's just different, you know what I mean? But it's my voice and most, a lot of the time, sometimes my words, uh, like with crosses or something like that. But other than that, um, you know, it's just, it is what it is kind of, you know, it's just like killing time. There's people asking for you in, in South America. Have you planned already something to go back there? Is Maybe I'll... right? Mm. Yeah, uh, soon, hopefully, uh, we've been very lucky over the years to go down many times, and um, uh, I would imagine sometime in the future, I um, always have an amazing time. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Okay, I'm we'll the last see. person to we'll see. Just, just wait, yeah. just wait. That's that's the bad thing. Uh, you're about to have uh, a tour in the UK with another band that I that I love, like AFI. Uh, is it is it 
is it flattering for you to, to find connection with, with the bands that are on tour with you? Do you have any connection, for example, with, with Devi Evox band? With AFI? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, well, the biggest connection is that we have the same managers. So, um, but I mean, wait long before that, I, uh, I met them years, years ago. Just, uh, one, actually, it's, it's actually kind of funny. I met, uh, Davey in, in an elevator and at, at a hotel, like one day. I was, I think we were there. I was in, I was actually recording some Team Sleep stuff in, in, in um, in um in Los Angeles and I got in the elevator and he got in the elevator and um I didn't know who who really who he was but everybody introduced so it was really friendly and just we started talking and became friends and he's like where are you going right now it's like I'm just going to my room to go put my bags he's like well let's go hang out and I was like okay so then we just hung out like for the whole rest of the night and uh and obviously you know we have a lot of mutual friends and I I see him a lot now actually um but uh but they're 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 a great band really good dudes and and um you know they've been a, they, i don't think a lot of people know been around for a long, how long they, know, those guys yeah, have been yeah. playing music it's like I'm crazy a, i'm a old school fan yeah. Of yeah. Fight, yeah i mean straight up like gilman street you know yeah, like yeah. old school nitro records yeah back it's, in the it's, days. it's like i i didn't even know yeah you know, i was like i think even even like davy grew up like in in, in roseville kind of by sacramento yeah, which and, is and adam the drummer grew up where I, I grew up in a small town in northern california and he he grew up like 10 miles from that too and i just you know we realized same with trey cool man he's like the same yeah. little, little but, but we never i mean we played um festivals together but we never yeah. played shows like and a, they just did their new record with the guy that did our last record as well too so it's a, a, a small little thing yeah yeah so it'll be fun yeah. yeah i wish i could join you for for that tour but i'm gonna join you tonight for uh, the performance in milan it's gonna Ooh. be a, a great show i'm i'm sure and uh, there are a few tickets still available if you want to come to milan i don't know where are you watching uh you now. should you should come yeah you should you should that's for sure i i i've seen some of your set list i'm super excited for tonight so thank you for being part of virgin radio so far cool. thank you for your music in the last 30 years i have a question for you yep did anybody ever tell you that you look like Tobias from Ghost? Totally, man. From Ghost? Yes. The Come over here. Where's the cameras at? Where are the cameras? Can uh, they see you? Or there. Can, can they see you? Yeah. Okay. Totally looks so like So I'm going to sell out Ghost. If anybody wants to know what, what Ghost looks like, the, the, the Papa... Wow. You look just like... I've just seen him like, <laughs> like covered with, with painting, so I never... This whole never. time I've been looking at like, man, is that Tobias? <laughs> yes, he looks... <laughs> that, that's kind of strange. Uh, I'm yeah. going to save it. He's a good guy. Okay, thank you. Thank you once again for your music and for your time. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Definitely.